Voluntary Input is brought to you by Anchor. Anchor is a one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. So if you've always wanted to start a podcast, make money doing it. Go to anchor.fm slash start to join a diverse community of podcasters already using Anchor. That's anchor.fm slash start. If you recognize this song, then you are either A, old enough to have played the original arcade classic, B, have been introduced to it in some time later on in your life, or C, you may be a member of an ever popular worldwide community of retro gamers. Yep, that is the classic Moon Patrol, released by Irem and licensed to Williams in 1982. It is widely credited for the introduction of parallax scrolling, that is scrolling whereas a background image is moved at a different speed than the foreground content while scrolling, in side-scrolling games. It still remains one of my favorite retro games of all time. However, I'm not going to be talking in depth about Moon Patrol in this episode. Rather, this episode is the intro to the retro gaming segment that will be a part of every voluntary input until... Well, I don't know, until I hit a brick wall and run out of games to talk about, even though I I can't really imagine that would actually happen. For this intro episode, I'm going to talk about my first experience with gaming, which involves a true classic that is still well known and sometimes still copied to this day. You see, I was about 11 or 12 years old, and back then my siblings and I would sometimes walk to one of the two movie theaters that were located downtown where I grew up. On this particular evening, if I can recall correctly, it was me, one of my brothers, one of my sisters, and an uncle who often hung out with us. He was kind of around about, you know, the same age as us, so, you know, we would always hang out. To be honest, I can't even remember what movie we went to go see, but I still will never forget the game we encountered. As we got closer and closer to the theater, we began to hear this loud, rhythmic, booming noise. Now, you have to remember, this was long before the days of the booming bass sounds that we uh, that we all hear coming from cars almost every day nowadays. And long before the 808 uh, became a, sta- a staple of rap music. So we were all completely puzzled by this sound that only got louder and louder as we got closer to the theater. In fact, as we got closer, we all began to think that maybe it was just some new movie experience that the theater was just playing extra loud to get attention. But then we opened the doors and walked in, and there it was, the source of this odd, deep bass boom-boom sound that we kept hearing. And it was Space Invaders. We were all mesmerized and instantly hooked, and it only cost a quarter to play. Now, if you're not familiar with Space Invaders, basically it was uh, uh, there were rows of aliens that would move from left to right across the screen, and each time they would drop down in sequence, and they would shoot at you from time to time, and you're you're just basically a gun at the bottom of the screen, and your objective was to just shoot and eliminate all the aliens before they reach the very bottom of the screen, and you had uh, three or four walls standing, you know, that you could hide behind, but the thing is that. As the aliens would shoot and hit those walls, they would crumble one block at a time until you were defenseless or until you wiped them out. And the thing is, with each alien that you shot, the more that you shot, they would begin to move faster and faster until you eliminated the last one. And with each progressing level, when the game would start, the whole group would start moving faster. And this is just how it got harder and harder and harder as you played. Now, just a little background context about the game itself. Uh, it, 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 it was a, It's a Japanese shooting video game that was released in 1978 by Taito. It was developed by uh, Tamahiro Nishikado, who was inspired by other media like uh, Breakout, The War of the Worlds, and Star Wars. 
the games was one of the it was one of the forerunners of modern video gaming and helped expand expand the video game industry from you know just like a little household novelty into a global industry because back then we only had like you know there was pong just kind of little novelty games like that but nothing that would be taken seriously then space invaders came along and said you know it was like boom this is going to be spread across the world and everyone's going to play and it became an immediate an immediate hit when it was released uh and and what's some of the funny things about is uh in the original planning of the game they had planned to have the aliens actually be human soldiers but Tato figured, you know, they didn't want to send the message that it was okay to be shooting people. So they changed them to aliens, which I find ironic because how far have we come since then? Because if you look at the most popular games now, like Fortnite, it's all about shooting people. They're all about shooting people, but not back then. You know, Tato figured, no, nah, that's not a good message to send. How ironic is that? Uh, shortly after it was released, Space Invader quickly grew in popularity. In 19, uh, 1980, it began to hit coin-operated arcades, the Atari 2600, and eventually the Nintendo Entertainment System. Now, a little side note about coin-operated arcades. I honestly, you know, a little bit of nostalgia here. I actually kind of miss them. To me, that was always a fun thing to do, especially, you know, as a, uh, as a, a young guy. You know, that was my friends and I or my siblings, we'd get together on like weekends and we would go hit arcades, you know, save up a little cash throughout the week. Let's go hit the arcades. Let's get some pizza and junk food and go play some video games. And it was always fun to see the new games that were coming out or if we could get out of town to go to some of the bigger cities and find their arcades because those arcades often had more games and they would often get the new games before we could see them, you know, before they came to our little town. So that, you know, that was always a fun thing to do. And in fact, you know, I can still remember looking back when Galaxian was released shortly after by Namco, well, midway in the U.S., as a uh, direct competitor to Space Invaders. And me and my friends would say things like, man, it's, it's just like Space Invaders, except the aliens fly down at you. And one final uh, tidbit about Space Invaders is throughout its lifetime, it has generated more than $500 million in revenue, and it continues. And like I said, it's interesting to see that every so often you could still see modern games today that kind of still build off of that model of either aliens or soldiers or some group of something coming down closer and faster to you. And you have to eliminate them until they get to you. All right, guys. Well, that's it. Like I said, this is just the intro episode to the retro gaming segment and i look forward to sharing more of some of my favorite retro game classics with you uh if you have some games that you remember that you'd like me to talk about or you just want to share uh, some of your memories feel free to shoot me an email at voluntaryinput at gmail.com or you can hit up my website leojallenjr.com and hit contact me there as well or if you're listening via the anchor app you can leave me a voice message uh, you go ahead, tell, tell me about some of your fond memories of some of your favorite retro games, and I may air it in a, a later episode. All right, guys, thanks a lot, and I look forward to talking to you later.